We're applying IFRS 15, Revenue Recognition, to a very basic example to see the application of the steps. As always, read the question first. Blue Hardware sells a $90 hammer before HST to a customer. The customer uses a credit card to pay for the purchase. The cost of the hammer to the retailer was $28. We're talking about the cost of the hammer, $28, to Blue Hardware when they bought it from their supplier. When should revenue be recognized? What entry would be made? Step 1. Identify the contract. It's clear that Blue Hardware and the customer are committed to exchanging the hammer. The good can be identified. It's a hammer. The payment terms have been identified. The contract has commercial substance because the two individuals are going to be in a different economic position afterwards. Blue will have money instead of a hammer and the customer will have a hammer instead of money. And finally, collection is 100% probable by Blue Hardware because they're going to collect from the credit card company and you can assume that credit card companies always pay. So step one has been met. We've identified the contract. Let's move to step two. The performance obligation is the handing over of the hammer to the customer. Once the hardware store has done that, their performance obligation has been met. Move on to step three. Determine the price. We know that the transaction price is the amount that the customer is going to pay for the hammer, but we question whether this will include the HST or exclude the HST. It's going to exclude the HST. Why is HST not included? Because we're determining the contract price for the hardware store, the revenue that the hardware store will be able to keep as their own revenue. When stores charges HST, they act as an agent for the government and they must remit that additional amount back to the government. Therefore, that cannot be claimed as revenue. So to put it succinctly, the transaction price can never include sales taxes. Let's move on to step number four. Allocate the transaction price to the different performance obligation. Not applicable because we know from step two that there is only one performance obligation. We're going to move the page down just a little. Step five. Recognize revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied. This happens when there's been a transfer of control of the hammer and the transfer of control in this case is because the risks and rewards of ownership have transferred to the customer. The moment the hammer is transferred over to the customer, given to the customer, that's when we can recognize revenue. Now what would the entry look like for the hardware store? On the date that ownership is transferred, the hardware store would recognize the revenue. Debit to cash. For how much? Assuming that HST is 13% here in Ontario, we've got $90 times 1.13 would be equal to 101.70. That's the amount of cash that the hardware store would receive. However, $11.70 of that is going to be remitted to the government as HST. The remaining $90 is revenue for the hardware store because they have met all five steps of the revenue recognition criteria. In addition, the hardware store can recognize the associated costs with regards to selling this hammer. So what did the company get? They got the use of this good to help them generate revenue and that's an expense, cost of goods sold. What did they give away? They gave away inventory, which no longer has future economic benefit because the company doesn't have it anymore. And that's the application of revenue recognition for a basic good.